What's going on, everybody? Hope y'all having a good evening. This should be pretty interesting. It make you feel good, and that's part of the reason y'all are so prone to be be fucked over by fuckboys. Because y'all don't do what I'm telling y'all. Y'all don't listen to the things that I say. Right? So, in a situation where a woman has been interacting with the guy for a couple weeks, couple days, however, however long before the invitation came up, she should be able to make some type of judgment on, is this motherfucker crazy or is this somebody cool? Do we have mutual friends? Do we do mutual things? Do we go to mutual places? Where does he work? What does he do for a living? She should have more than enough information about this dude that she's potentially going to go fuck. That before she goes, she can GPS her location. She can share her location. She can give his address. She can give his name. She can give his phone number. She may have screenshots of their conversations, screenshots of his license plates. She can have an, an intelligent woman has an abundance of information and technology available to her in 2017 so that it is not a it is not the fucking 80s. You are not in danger where you cannot go to somebody's house and have not put things in place to make sure you are fucking safe. But let the women tell it. Let the women that have had a bad experience with it before. Now their philosophy is never ever do it again. And tell other, other women in the world they should never ever do it again. When you have women like my wife. That their first date with their husband that they're pushing 15 to 20 years with. Was to Wendy's drive through and to his crib. And it was nothing but a three four hour conversation. Who has more credibility? The person that's been in a healthy relationship or the person that's single, the person that's clueless, the person that has flawed dating strategies, the person that's telling you something based off what? Think, let's think, just think about that, right? The reason why there is not a significant difference between going to a guy's house and going on a date is because if somebody has intentions on hurting you or harming you or doing something to you, the only thing that they have to do is get you alone. And that can happen anywhere. You can be pumping gas and a man with a gun can run up on you and force you in your car. Right? You can be, you could be anywhere and that could happen. You could be leaving the restaurant where you get in the car and that's when he pulls out his knife or his weapon or whatever he's going to use to co coerce you. So the idea that the only time you're in danger is if you go to his house is extremely flawed logic. It's extremely flawed, extremely limited, very inaccurate. Because it creates this sense that, oh, if he took me to the restaurant, we all good. If he took me to the restaurant, he's not a fuck boy. If he took me out, I, I, I'm every it creates mountains of false false reality for a woman. And so if you're dealing with a man that has intentions on fucking over you, you are playing into his hands. Because he took your ass on a couple of dates. If he got plans on fucking robbing you, so what if he took you out and spent 60 or 70 bucks on you? You know what I mean? Like, but when you try to talk to them and you try to point these things out to you, they're too narrow minded. They're too focused on shifting the conversation. They're not paying attention to reality. They're not paying attention to what makes sense. They're, so, so think about it. I'm, I'm, if I'm a, a fucking a criminal, if I'm, if I'm planning on r raping a woman. The last fucking place I want to do is send her to the address that I sent her in text message. You know what I'm saying? Like, the last thing I want her to do is know exactly where to send the police looking for me. Right? So, if that's if that's just common sense, I watch enough CSI and, and enough crime shows and movies to know what, what makes sense and what don't from a criminal standpoint. That just don't make sense to me. 
now I, I, maybe I'm maybe I'm a sophisticated criminal, but that does not make sense to me. If I was going, if somebody's going to do something to somebody, the last thing you want them to do is be able to knock on your motherfucking door and come find out exactly where the shit took place. If I'm saying something that don't make sense, please correct me. Please point out how dumb I sound. I'd love to hear an explanation on something that I'm saying that does not make sense. And so, but these women that have this, believe in these myths, believe that if you go to a guy's house, he's going to try to force you to fuck. That is so untrue. That is so, that is the opposite of how men that are successful with women operate. The last thing he has to do is pressure a woman for sex. One, because he knows that decreases the chances of him getting it. He has enough experience with, with women that he knows that pressuring a woman for sex is one of the worst, the, the most ineffective ways of getting it. I, I don't know any man that's successful with women that pressures women for pussy. They find ways to make the women attracted to them and let the pussy come to them. And one of the main reasons that they are not pressed for pussy is because they always have somebody that they can get pussy from. Why should he be pressed for pussy when he got multiple other chicks that he can fuck whenever he want? Why is he... That's, that was, that's what puts a guy on a momentum to be a hoe. When you can just kick it with chicks and go to their crib and not try to fuck and just... When you can just be chill and allow them to come to you, you have a much you have a much higher rate of success with women. So all of these myths that y'all have, I'm speaking from experience. Me not pressing chicks for pussy got the pussy thrown at me. When 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 I would be trying to tell chicks like, yo, we need we don't need to be having sex. We need to just be chilling. We need to just be cool. I got more pussy. They 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 were more aggressive in fucking me so i know firsthand how this how this works being able to go to a chick's crib at 11 o'clock in the afternoon and not, not not during booty call hours you come across as a super gentleman oh girl he just came over we just talked we just kicked it then he left he didn't pressure me for sex he didn't make it a big deal that's 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 not reverse psychology that's just being you're not in a position where you're desperate for sex. That's what that is. So, so the way that the, the way that you're operating is, shit. I'll get it eventually. You know what I'm saying? Like she wouldn't keep coming over here if she wasn't if she wasn't interested. And if and if things are not progressing how you want, you stop inviting her over. Now she's going to miss all these valuable conversations and all this valuable quality time that she enjoys so much. So you have leverage. Women want to be the, the be with women that other women would want to be with. There's a reason that lots of chicks wanted to, to be with the, that type of guy. So the, the, the myths that they have about how these men operate are false. So when you're when you're dealing with the type of man that I talk about, the man that has his shit together, the man that lives in a nice, safe, cool crib. Where you and your friends come to them like, oh man, your shit is nice. Where'd you get this? Where'd you get this? Where you are comfortable, where you feel safe, where you can envision yourself being a part of that environment. He doesn't have to, to make you feel threatened. He does, and he, he uh, inviting a woman to his crib is not a bad thing because one of, one of my favorite movies of all time is Boomerang. It's probably a little bit before your time. But in the movie, this is a movie about Eddie Murphy where he was a player. And one of every date he went on, he invited Crips, chicks to his crib to see how fucking nice his crib was. Stuck, it stuck as a teenager. Having a nice crib pro will probably get you a lot of pussy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So a man that has a nice crib, that he ain't got to be a fucking chef, but he can cook a decent meal. Can make some some frozen drinks, some margaritas, something to to set the mood, and have a good conversation. That man's pussy rate is above average. 
just off of those things alone. And that's why he, he views his house as a benefit. He, he gets more value out of having a woman come to his crib, see his degrees, see his, see his cane from his fraternity, get to talk about what he, you know what I'm saying? Like when, when a woman gets to see how you really live, you know what I'm saying? And learn things about you that they didn't know. Oh, you got a sword hanging up. Oh, where you, what's this for? Oh, I'm a black belt in such and such. Oh, I didn't know you were in martial arts. Yeah, when I was a teenager, I used to be in company. Like, that's how you get to know a motherfucker. Where you get to ask them questions. Like, oh, who's, who's this picture? Oh, that's my niece. Or that's my goddaughter. Like, you, that's how you learn about them. By being in their environment. But so many of y'all view it negatively. Y'all view it. Uh, y'all only see the negative about it. That's your bad. That's your flawed perspective on what really happens. There are there are lots of quality relationships that started off on a come come by my crib and, and just chill, see how I, see how I live type of vibe. Y'all are missing out by placing these standards. He has to invite me to the restaurant. He has to take me out. What does that mean? What does that sign signify? What value does that mean? Okay, he took you out. Does that mean you safe? Does that mean he's not a fuckboy? Does that mean that y'all gonna get in a relationship? What does that mean in the big scheme of things? Not a fucking thing. I mean he spent 30, 40, 50, however much dollars going out, which is something that men in my tax bracket do on a regular basis. That is not a big deal. So if you treat it like it's a big deal and it's not shit to him, you're losing on the, on the value scale because you're placing this, this is so important. He took me out on a date. He opened the door for me. You know what I'm saying? Like you're, you're feeding into all this superficial shit that does not signify anything. You're focusing on things that don't, don't mean anything. That's why y'all keep coming up with the empty bag. Y'all place all this value in whatever, however you come up with what's going to happen, these futuristic fairy tale goals and, and dating strategies. And then when you don't focus on the things that really matter, you end up looking kind of silly in the end. Because that guy that you cut off and blocked because he invited you to see his fucking condo is still successfully dating. You know what I'm saying? Like, you missed out by doing, by cutting him off. For him inviting you to something that you could just easily say, nah, I'm not interested. I'd rather go here. There, look, go back and watch and see how many women said that they would cut him off just for asking that. Just for asking. Just for putting that invitation out there. The invitation that they could e instantly know, say no to. That's what I mean by stupid dating strategies. Strategies that don't make sense. That don't follow logic. Cutting off a potential person that has already made it aware that they're interested in you because of a suggestion that they made. That's a very good dating strategy, ladies. You're going you're gonna to get to, the, to, to be married, happily married with that type of strategy. Does that sound like you're going to you're going to go through the dating process? Somebody suggests something that you can just say no to. But instead of just taking the easy approach and just saying no, you cut them off. <laughs> oh man, just hear just hearing uh, hearing the way that women formulate they they logic and they decision making when it comes to dating, man. It, I just sit back and it's like, oh man, they so fucking clueless. But they get so they so offended when I say clueless. But what other fucking words should I use? What other you words can I use, man? When I break this shit down and and I point out the the, the comments that y'all see, y'all see how this shit don't make sense and it don't match reality. I mean, what woman thinks that every fucking man that ever invites her to his crib is a rapist or a sexual predator? Like, you know, you know, small of a percentage of men are fucking sexual predators. 